Let's bring this project to an end. After I treated the stainless steel pipes with sandpaper, the ball bearings slid rather smoothly over them, so I attached them back onto both stationary plates. Next, I positioned the limit switches, checked whether the limit bolts would activate them, which they did, and thus secured them to the moving platform. Afterwards, I positioned the stepper motor and mounted it with four M3 bolts right before attaching the pulley onto the motor shaft. As a counterpart for the pulley, the other stationary platform received a 40mm long M5 bolt, which was secured firmly with a nut and a bit of Loctite. Then followed another nut, washer, two flank bolt bearings, another washer and finally a nut onto the bolt as well. Since the pulley had a distance of roughly 1cm from its platform, I fine-tuned the location of the bolt bearing to achieve a similar distance. The only missing component for the motor system was the timing belt, for which the small aluminum piece that I created earlier was necessary. I positioned it in the middle of the platform, marked the two required drill holes and created them with a 5mm drill. Next, I secured two 40mm long M5 bolts to the platform with nuts and a bit of Loctite. Placed the small aluminum piece onto them and marked the spots where the timing belt would collide with the metal. I used those markings as a reference to create slits with my metal saw in which the timing belt would fit snugly. At the end of the slits, 4mm holes were drilled, which can be used to squeeze the timing belt between two spring washers, and thus secure it in place. Then I simply positioned the aluminum piece on top of two nuts, tensioned the timing belt while mounting it to the other side, and completed the motor system by adding two nuts on top. And after a successful test of moving the platform with the timing belt, it was time for the electronics. The heart of the system was, as always, an Arduino Nano. For the display, I went with this common 16x2 LCD, which has a PCF8574 on the back, which means we only need the I2C pins A4 and A5 of the Arduino to control it. But speaking of control, I used a rotary encoder with integrated push button as the main input. In combination with two capacitors and a Schmidt trigger IC for debouncing, I connected its pins to the interrupt pins 2 and 3 of the Arduino. And if you're completely confused now and wonder how a rotary encoder works, then have a look at my DIY FM radio project. I explained it there. Nevertheless, I then connected the two limit switches to pin 7 and 8, which will connect the input pins to ground once the switches are activated, and completed the electronic circuit with an A4988 stepper motor IC. It was connected to the Arduino according to the schematic that I had drawn for this project with the help of the free EasyEDA circuit design software. Link is in the description. At the end, I hooked up the stepper motor and the 12 volt lead acid battery power source. And at this point, it was time for the software part, which ultimately turned out to be quite a long Arduino sketch. After uploading it, the LCD presents the two important modes, RPM mode and time mode. In RPM mode, the motor rotates with a specific RPM, which can be adjusted even while moving and the motor also reverses its direction of rotation if the required limit switch got activated. In timeout though, I can set a time in which the platform should travel either from left to right or right to left. Again, the limit switches act as an indicator when the platform is all the way left or right. Once I was happy with the results of the software part, I gathered all the required components, created a copper dot perf board with dimensions of 7 by 5 cm and started the soldering with the Arduino Nano. In a time span of 1 hour, I added the remaining IC sockets and connected all the pins among each other according to the previously created schematic with silver copper wire and flexible wire. And if you want to build something similar, you can find the codes, the schematic and other information as always in the video description. After the circuit was complete, I added a thicker wire with cable shoes to the VIN pin of the Arduino for the battery and used the 123D design software to create a mounting for the electronics. 
Once the 5 hour printing process of the Delta 3D printer was over, I removed the support material of the print, which revealed some rather unpleasant looking spots. But nevertheless, I continued by drilling 3mm holes for the LCD, mounted it with bolts and nuts, drilled a 7mm hole for the rotary encoder, mounted that as well, drilled 3mm holes for the perf boards and finally connected the external components to the perf boards before attaching that to the 3D print. Since the first power up of the circuit was successful, it was time for the wiring of the limit switches. For that, I simply pushed three thin stiff wires through one pipe, sold them to the underside of one limit switch, used a piece of paper as an insulator between the aluminum and the solar joints and secured it all with bolts and nuts. I repeated this attaching procedure for the limit switch on the other side, positioned the mounting for the electronics at the end of the platform, drilled two 3mm holes through it and ultimately hooked up the motor wires and limit switches to the circuit before attaching it permanently to the mounting and the mounting then to the platform. And in theory this project was complete, but I was not really happy with the results. With an RPM of 100, the camera swings just a bit near the limit switches, but rather intensely in the middle. With a lower RPM of 40, this effect decreases, but still delivers unusable footage. The reason are the weak pipes, which cannot handle this kind of weight and forces. So I got myself those stainless steel rods with a diameter of 8mm as well. I simply shortened the existing steel pipes, relocated them on the other side of the platforms, increased the 3mm mounting holes to 4mm in order to attach 4 crossbar holders to the aluminum, secured the rods in place with M5 bolts and extended the timing belt system of the movable platform with 60mm long pieces of threaded rods. Now the final results are still not perfect, especially not in the middle section, but the area around the limit switches does actually deliver some decent footage. And if you are interested in time lapses, then make sure to subscribe to my second channel. I will hopefully post some soon over there. As always, thanks for watching, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.